Okay, are we live? We certainly are. Okay. Let's get rid of that. And we're playing a new game tonight, folks. A game that. Let me just close the door. A game that is uh, quite interesting, quite quirky. And it's touch and go whether it'll actually work or not, but we'll uh, we'll certainly try. We'll certainly try. But I think you'll find it interesting. I certainly do. I'm not going to be speaking too much because it's quite a narrative-driven game. I don't want to interrupt. Not a great stack, so it's not coming up, which is a worry. Oh, there we go. There we go. I need to resize the screen because it's not big enough. Just bear with me. Two seconds. While I sort this out. Is it not? There we go. How is that looking? Let me see it on my screen. But can you see it on yours? I don't think so. Uh, there we go. However, I've disappeared into the ether. Good. I think we're away. I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. It's dangerous to run around here, boys. Grandpa, hurry! Hurry Grandpa, up! Grandpa, you're too slow!
Okay. Okay. Welcome to Deadly Premonition. Unfortunately, it is the director's cut, which I'm. I don't. I'm more of a. I, I prefer the original, but it is what it is. It's the only version you can play at the moment. Unless you have an Xbox 360, which I do not. I don't suspect it'll have much in the way of graphics options. Yeah, of course it doesn't. Yeah, that's it, that's, that's all you're getting. Literally. change York's car I'll keep it the same because I don't want to don't want to interfere with how it how it looks originally because we want it the authentic experience so let's go can't change the resolution can't change anything So this cutscene here was added in the director's cut. There's a pre-game cutscene and a post-game cutscene added in the director's cut that was not in the original version of Deadly Premonition. Um, I don't think I think neither of them and it, I don't think either of them, sorry, are required, and I don't think they add anything particularly. But it's on, so let's watch it. Uh, yes, of course. You've been waiting a long time for this, so... How about a special one? This story is very strange and very nasty, but somewhat nostalgic. Do you think you can be a good girl and listen all the way to the end? Is it a scary story? It might be, but it's also a very uh, important story. If you don't want to hear it, I can tell you a different story. No, I want to hear it. This way, I won't be scared. 
<laughs> Turn on the TV then. Leave the sound down my like always. Trading cards. The staple of any game collectible. The strange clock is ticking away, though the room itself makes you feel as if time has stopped. A doll shaped like a fat man it has a plate on it which reads Washington State. Sorry to keep you waiting. Please wait until the end of the world. Certain uh, themes and correlations with particular TV shows should be quite apparent now. Zach. Zach. Can you hear me? It's me, York. If you can hear my voice, could you respond? Ah, good. I thought you went to sleep. Zach, don't be surprised. The crime took place out in the country this time. Let's take it slow. Okay, Zach? I'm sure that's one way of looking at it, but it's totally wrong. Listen, they both need each other. It's called interdependency, and they both know it. Yeah, I know. He does terrible things to Tom. Nasty, even sadistic things. But that's fine, as long as that's what Tom wants. Think of it. It's actions. He's always asking for it. It's his partner's job to fulfill that need, and Jerry knows that. Proof? Well, in the Tom and Jerry show, they live with each other. Hello? Hello? Zach, I can't believe the Bureau still can't get me a satellite phone. These puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. Well... I'll be a happy camper, even if it ends up being a waste of time. At the very least, it'll get me out of the cramped city for a while. Right, Zach? The perpetrator from the last case really was something. Who'd have thought there'd be razors laced into your nails? Crazy. Just crazy. Well, at least I now have a scar to show off. See this? I got this when I arrested the Catwoman wannabe. Women. They're crazy. 
Don't you agree, Zach? Zack, there goes the civilized world. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay. So at first glance, you may be wondering, what the hell is this shite? What is this? Quite frankly, you'd be right to ask that. At first glance, the shitty fire effects, the low res graphics, um, the weird sound effects, the inappropriate music. But uh, there's a good reason for this. There's a very good reason for this, as may become apparent. However, I need to figure out. That's it. It looks sort of like a, a low-grade, low-budget knockoff version of uh, Resident Evil, doesn't it? You could be right. You could be right. But there is more to this game than meets the eye. A lot more than meets the eye. As I hope was So Agent York Morgan is an FBI agent and he's an expert in criminal profiling. Looks like we're being welcomed. Zach, I'll let you handle the meet and greet. Who's Zach, you ask? Well, that would be telling. Suffice to say, can't see much through this fog. The path might be blocked from the rain. We should stay away from obvious danger. Suffice to say that Zack represents another element of Francis York Morgan, York Morgan. Francis York Morgan is not your typical protagonist of a video game. 
In fact, he's probably one of the most unique characters that you're ever going to encounter in gaming. And you will find out why, depending on how long I stream this game for. Not tonight, I mean long term. For tonight, we'll get through this area if I still retain the uh, the skills to do so. So much for my hopes for a peaceful picnic. Do me a favour and stay sharp, Zach. So, we were run off the road. I oh, had to swerve to avoid some sort of being in a red raincoat. The hood up. Very... Very uh, typical of a horror genre, film, game. But this game does subvert expectations. And now it's time. I wonder if you could change the buttons because the aiming's on the, the bumpers and not. Can't change the controls. Great. <laughs> well, you're using the bumpers to shoot by the looks of it, which is a bit annoying. Oh, never mind. Can of pickles. The pickles. Doesn't look like anyone lives here. No reclusive hairy brutes to greet us. Should get the power back on Zach. And open the gate for us. Oh dear. She's not too happy that we've opened that gate. Mysterious shadow. So combat is very much it's very much reminiscent of Resident Evil 4 the original Resident Evil 4 not the remake obviously but <laughs> not as good but what I mean by that is you can't aim and shoot at the same time and I'll be frank with you, the combat in this game is abysmal. It's absolutely shocking. And again you ask, well why are you playing it then? Why are you playing this game that looks like it was a... cast off PS3 game. Maybe even a PS2 game actually. With the textures, the 2D textures and... low res and... you know... shitty combat weird music and menu effects what 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 you do why are you wasting why are you wasting 
valuable time on, on this earth with a finite lifespan playing this junk but not all is not what it seems sometimes is it I've been through a lot of crazy situations but that one that one takes the cake it's the first time I've been attacked so directly Zach can you give me a logical explanation about what that was Never mind, don't answer. Life is fun because of the mysteries. Right, Zack? It would be rude not to answer. A chip, a chip, lollipop. I should report to headquarters to give them an update. Gives you an opportunity to save, which is good because we didn't save earlier. Because I pressed the wrong button. There you go. But as they say, do don't. Um, I thought I'd already picked that up. Is there another one. Cool. Don't don't judge a book by its cover, and that is very much the case with this game. That's the uh, gate lock behind us. Speaking of which, um, just before I came, literally just before I put the stream on, in fact, because I was debating whether to or not, because I'm not sure whether playing this game on a stream is good. I don't know if any, it'd be any interest, even though I think it's quite a niche, so it might appeal more than Fortnite and Call of Duty and FIFA, for those that have got a bit more eclectic taste like me in games. Um, there's a street light outside our house that hasn't worked for four years since we moved in on a new estate by the way, these new estates in England are shite would not recommend learnt my lesson um, they, they just build these cheap houses and and they uh, knock them up made out of paper mache crappy walls, no good at keeping heat in no good at keeping heat in um, so that they're no good and then they get too hot in the summer so they just you get the worst of both worlds really Big man. Got plenty of steel pipes now, haven't we? Yeah, so these houses are not great in British weather. They're rubbish when it's cold and too hot when it's hot because they're not built particularly well. They don't come with solar panels, they don't come with heat pumps either, which they should. But anyway, that's another story. This generator might give us the power we need. There's a control panel here. Go, go, go. Boop. Um. Anyway. The road has been atrocious since we moved in four years ago. Hasn't been tarmacked, hasn't been laid properly, and some of the street lights don't work. And there's a street light next to us that hasn't worked since we moved in. Anyway. The building company have finally decided to get a contractor in to fix it, and they fucked up. And they were working t at nine o'clock tonight in English time, British time. Um, and they were cutting the road up with saw blades and all sorts at like eight o'clock at night, which is always a worry. And then just before I put the stream on for this, we had a power cut. So, there was about four blocks in some sort of hole that dug up near the light outside. Obviously, then they cut the power off to the whole estate for about 20 minutes. So I was thinking, well, I think that says it all, but we're still here. I still decided to push through. And uh, much like Agent Morgan there, 
the blocks managed to get power going like York managed to e get the generator going and we're away just uh, you're gonna have to bear with me just while I get used to the game again the controls and stuff so if I'm you know if I'm not running and taking it fast like I usually do it's because I haven't played this in a long time I played it originally on the Xbox 360 God knows when when I was a young man then I played it again on the PS3 this director's cut which again I don't think is not as good as the original I mean you're splitting hairs when it comes to the technical pardon me aspects of these games but the Xbox 360 version was slightly better than the PS3 version it had a better frame rate slightly better textures I don't know if that translates to this PC version but it seems to be running ok I don't know if that's just a case of my hardware forcing it to sound effects of like the clothes in the menu it just it's weird but I actually love this game I really do the generator looks really bad Zack I think the killer really had a grudge against it axe in the generator I wonder who put the axe there hmm so yeah you gather clues throughout these segmented sort of I'd call them instances if you want to use World of Warcraft terms you're like in a contained little area because of, once you're out of here it's actually open world Zack let's try to find a way to fix this mess fuse box get another item that's well known to connoisseurs of Resident Evil So there, there is actually some, not much, but there is some nuance to the combat. When you're aiming, you've got, a, like, if you aim long enough, the uh, reticle will zoom in. And then that means you're going to get, like, a critical shot, a critical hit. And you've got your melee weapons to... Um, to break boxes and fences and stuff. Um, but... As you can see, your gun, your pistol, your FBI, your FBI pistol, and your mission knife. I don't know. Your pistol has got an infinite ammo, which is very unusual to play a game with. When you start, like starting with, apart from Tomb Raider, I've never played a. And Hitman, actually, for that matter. Hitman. You get, I think you get infinite ammo with your, pist your pistols on that, don't you, actually? But I don't think I don't think you get an infinite ammo with pistol on here because <laughs> because it's a cool weapon. Or the reason the reason that you have infinite ammo for your pistol is because sorry, I nearly knocked my contact lens out there. Fair. I might have to re. I might have to pull that in again. I think I've knocked it out of. Looks like nothing. Looks like nothing's broken. Since it's the same model, I think I can fix it. Okay. Turn his hand to uh, be an electrician, a Sparky. I might have to. I might have to switch my eyes out here. I'll try and power through. The power in the area should be much more stable now. Let's hurry ahead, Zach. Yeah, the the infinite ammo is basically an admission that from these developers that the combat is garbage. So they try and make it not as as you know as least. Hang on. 
I hope my left eye's really gone here. They're giving you infinite ammo because they know the combat's shite. Fuck, he kind of threw me off there with his aggressive. They, they, they don't want you to get frustrated too much with the combat because it's frustrating anyway because it's just not very good. So they don't want you to be scratching around for ammo and stuff like Resident Evil because it just make it borderline unplayable to be honest. Looks like we let in some unwelcome guests double time Zach. It is actually it is actually maintaining a 60 Oh, oh, got caught. It is actually, um, maintaining a sixty solid sixty frames at the moment, which you might think is well, look at it, of course, it should, but you'd be surprised with this game. It was it struggled to hit 30 frames on the 360 and a PS3. Anyway, later on in the game, the combat never particularly gets too bad, but there's certain enemies in the game that look like the ring girl, that that girl off the ring. And uh, they are so annoying to fight because they just take so long to kill. And if I'm being honest, if I was the developers, I'd just got rid of the combat completely because I don't think it's. I don't. Whoa. Caught me, caught me there. Spade, spadey lady. You weird. Ulcer patterned clothing. Oh crap, yeah, it's just infinite spawn there. That's the other thing. Enemies keep, keep respawning, so you know, you kind of do need infinite ammo for that reason. See, it's got QTEs as well, which are more frustrating the combat. Because uh, yeah, I will end up dying because I, I can't remember what the uh, sequences are. I was it was lucky I reacted quick enough there, to be honest. Okay, let's go. It could do away with the combat. It doesn't need the combat. But I feel like the developers felt like they had to put it in to have some sort of to make it more gamey. But does it doesn't need it. Doesn't need combat. And it oh, it could have reduced the amount of combat substantially. Didn't need to put in infinitely respawning enemies for a start. Chirp a chirp lollipop. There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zink? My coffee warned me about it. Yesterday morning, the milk I poured in my coffee made a sign. It said, Tomorrow you'll arrive in a place that will change your fate. So we're out of that now, we've done that finish that instance which is good we'll save the game so it's at this sort of interlude that I want to sort of talk about how I actually discovered Deadly Premonition because it's a very niche game obviously look at it 
pardon me. Um, it's a very niche game. Look at the state of it. And like you might say, well, it is an old game. It looked like shit when it came out. When this came out, there was games like I don't know. The original Red Dead. Um, what else was around that time? There was loads of games that looked good. You know, this it doesn't matter because that's not what it's about. That's not what this is about. But as we make our way down to our very in-your-face <laughs> quest marker, <laughs> um, and I, I will start running at some point. I discovered this game because I used to listen to a podcast called uh, that was put together by a website called GameCritics.com. Shout out to them. That's GameCritics.com. I'm not sure what their output's like these days, but back in the day, I, I it was probably the best website for me for good game reviews. And they used to have a podcast, and there was a writer on there and a contributor to the podcast called uh, an American bloke. A Canadian Greenville Nature Preserve Lake County Forest Preserves and um, there was a guy on there called Daniel Weissenberger and he came on the podcast and he spoke about this game at length and he said the way he described it he made it sound amazing and he said when the game starts and you finish that first section I've just done there he said there's a bit where you come out of the gate and there's a you've got to go to your quest objective on the other side of the bridge and he said you know there's, there's no, nothing between there and the bridge like the quest mark as you can see there's nothing there's literally nothing I've picked up a couple of medals but th there's nothing you just you're just walking from one bit to the other and 90% of games would not just have the player walk, run across dead space basically like that like it's just they would fill it with something they'd put something there the player cuts in the player mute to do something not here you just you just have to walk over that bridge <laughs> and it was like that that sort of audacity of game development I need to stop rubbing my eyes I'm not my contact lens out it's that audacity of de game development that tells you that this game is different that's what Daniel Weissenberger said so this bridge walking from that gate to this bridge tells you that this game is not normal there's something different about it and you may be thinking what? what are you going on about? just trust, trust me bro <laughs> trust me bro so yeah Daniel Weissenberger really espoused why this game was good it wasn't just this bridge but it was other a lot of other things of course but that put it on my radar and then um, I read a review by I'm reticent to to bring this person up not because of anything I've got you know I'm very up minded liberal but uh, anyway We'll just move that to one side. I read a review by Jim Sterling of this. Um, and they gave it a good score. Kind of didn't describe it in a way that justifies it, though, because the way that Jim described it was like, it's really shit, but it's good. It's that shit, it's good, but that's not quite right. It's not, it's not, <laughs> it's not so shit, it's good, like the room film with Tommy Wise out it's not that it's not that that's how he was peddling it but that got me interested in it as well so I decided to take the plunge I'll leave it there because there's a cutscene coming up I'll come back now you were very late I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. FBI Special Agent, Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. 
That's what everyone calls me. Agent York? Good, that's good. Are you the sheriff? Uh, no, I'm Deputy Sheriff Emily Wyatt. George, he's the sheriff. He went looking for you, actually. He should be back soon. I see. If you don't mind me asking, did you walk all the way here? My car broke down, that's all. She's easy on the eyes. Definitely worth a trip to the primitive world. By the way, don't mention anything about what happened back there. She'll think you're a psycho. Don't want that, do we, Zack? Welcome to Greenvale. I'm the sheriff, George Woodman. Call me George. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Could you tell me why the FBI is so interested in a small town homicide? Let's just say it's a personal interest in killers of young women. I'm always looking for new sample cases to help me with my profiling. Both our superiors have cleared this with each other. You can remain in command. You don't have a problem with this, do you? No. No problem. Just want to set things straight. Our small town has its share of problems. I'm the one fixing them one by one and maintaining peace and order. You can have your profiling sample, but I need you to understand that. Of course. Of course. By the way, George, I had a little accident with my car. Could you send someone to take care of it? Oh, and my clothes and luggage are still inside. All right, don't worry. I'll get my assistant Thomas to take care of it. Do you need anything else? Thanks, that'll be all. Well then, I think I'll rest up first at the hotel. Then I'll join you on your investigation. Don't know how to say that, but uh, we really don't need your help. Unlike some of your corrupt city police officers, I play it by the book. I hope you'll come to appreciate that, Agent Morgan. And we'll handle the investigation. You just think of this as a vacation. Take it easy. Enjoy the nature here. You don't have to be a tree worshiper to appreciate the wildlife here. Let's reassess the situation. There are no cavemen here. We're as far forward as the Middle Ages. And we've just met the king. One thousand two, one thousand two hundred five dollars in wages. Not bad. Not bad at all. Previously, during the investigation, these puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. Welcome. Something in this town. You feel it, Zach? I'm confident more than you about it. It's broken. I've been using that one for a long time. 
Why didn't you get it repaired? This TV is important to you, right? It's got some memories attached to it, sure. I used to watch movies on this thing with your grandma all the time. Grandma liked movies? Of course she did. Everyone loves movies, right? I love movies, too. I've never been to a movie theater, though. So, as I, as I hinted, at, hinted, hinted at at the start of the stream, if you're a fan of David Lynch, this is very much reminiscent of the Red Room from Twin Peaks. And as you no doubt also recognised, I'm just looking up there because I've got a poster of Mulholland Drive in my room. There's a lady there that looks very reminiscent of Naomi Watts. Which is not a coincidence, I'm sure. Sugar donut, lovely stuff. Um, yes, yeah, it's safe to say this game is heavily inspired by David Lynch, Twin Peaks in particular. Now, I actually haven't ever watched Twin Peaks, and I've always been meaning to. So some of the references might actually go over my head. Nonetheless, oh, perhaps maybe I get more enjoyment out of this because I've watched Twin Peaks. If you've watched Twin Peaks, you maybe might find this a bit. I don't know. Might not. It might be a lesser version of that. I will really watch. It. I will watch it eventually. But suffice to say, I'm very much a fan of this bizarre, surreal storytelling and characters I'm very much a fan of it and I'm a very much a fan of it in games because I've not before or since played a game like this that's as surreal as zany as quirky as this game and it's for that reason that I love it mechanic. We won't be using it often. It's better to just run past them or kill them. Again, systems in the game that probably were designed to make it more enjoyable and intense but it just didn't work out like that. It just didn't work out like that. As a, as a game, as a game game, it's, it is garbage. It doesn't matter because it's it's the story, it's the characters, it's the setting, it's the music, it's the feeling, it's the themes that make it what it is. So 
first aid kit. So we're at we're at the hotel now, where York's staying, in the middle of nowhere, Greenvale. Zack, the symbolism in my dreams continues to intensify. A forest of red trees, a carpet with red leaves, a strange doll, and twin angels. But that child is what bothers me the most. I swear I've seen it before. I just can't remember where. Well, it'll probably come back to me eventually. For now, we need coffee. Francis Shark Morgan is Let's very much like sorry, it's, it's Snowy McCurley. He's, he's a very I big really fan need some coffee. of then coffee. We can head to the sheriff's office. There's a proper procedure for everything, right, Zach? So this is your hotel room. This is your basically your base of operations. You can change your clothes, save, even have a shave. Because he does start to stink after a while if you don't clean him up. Okay, 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 and that one now. Looks comfortable enough, though I'm starting to miss my own bed back home. Where you save game. I wonder if you can shave yet. Um, so I did say that. Where's the. Uh, I'm sure there was a shower in here. Where's the bathroom? Um, I did say I haven't played a game before, like before or since, like this. However, I will say that Alan Wake Two does give me similar vibes, Deadly Premonition, and it has much the same issues. I don't think the combat's great, and it. it's obviously better than this, and it looks better than this. That's given, but it's still a bit mishmashy. It's still a bit. It tries to be like Resident Evil 4, like this does, but it isn't. It's not as good. Um, unless, unless he's, uh, unless the other door was the bathroom. Um, yeah, it's not Resident Evil 4, but... There we are. Hmm, not bad. Um, but it, again it's like this it's very surreal Hall Alan Wake 2 it does things that most other games don't try with the story and the characters and the setting so again I give it a free pass on, on that front take a shower might help clear up our thoughts Zach so I'll always I'll tell you what as well look for all of its technical issues it's actually got a mirror in it and as I was saying Lies of P some games can't even hunt, some get some high end triple A games can't do mirrors for whatever reason. So yeah. I don't think I'm gonna last much longer, I'm uh, flagging a bit here, so I'll go up the hotel and uh save game. But yeah, I'll always, I'll always give a game a free pass. It's a bit like what Mark Kermode says about films. You'll always respect and admire films that try something different, even if they fail. 
and I don't this hasn't failed it's failed as a game but it hasn't failed as like a uh, experience it hasn't failed as an experience Look, I love that liminal space there that's I love liminal space the size of this hotel as well it's huge Like that uh, hotel off the shining. Let's get to reception. What are we going for? We need coffee first, don't we? So, yeah, I'll always. I'll always praise and respect the developer when they're trying something different, even if the execution isn't perfect. And it's like that with this, and it's like that with Alan Wake 2. Um, so I can't say Alan Wake 2 is the best game made this year because it isn't. As much as GameSpot would like to think it is, it isn't because as a game, it fails. Deadly Premonition is a game, it fails, and you've got to accept that. The combat's rubbish, and the driving on here, oh, wait, till we, wait till we start that. So you can't, you can't in good faith call it a brilliant game because it's not. But as a piece of entertainment, as a, as a cultural entity, it has val it has value. And as an experience, it's superb. And this is a brilliant experience because it's got amazing story and characters, which hopefully you'll find out, and you will agree with me. And if you don't, that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Your breakfast is ready for you. Thank you, Mrs. Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. Well then. Thank you, Polly. I'm starving. Is everything all right, Mr. Morgan? Yes, it's delicious, Polly. My compliments to the chef. I'm hoping my cooking will bring back repeat guests. Honestly, though, it's been a while since anyone has stayed here. I couldn't help but notice. Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. What's that? The salt's in that white shaker there. Thank you. I was wondering if there were any other guests or workers here. Oh, no, no one else. My husband and I used to run this place, but he's in heaven now. You've been working here alone since then. Must be hard by yourself. Oh, my. We're all out of pepper. I'm very sorry. It must be difficult to run a hotel by yourself. Well, yes, I suppose. I could just live on my pension. But I have to admit, running a hotel is kind of like a hobby of mine. That's nice. Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. Oh my, Mr. Morgan, you're embarrassing me. So early in the day, too. I think I'm a little too old for you. And I still love my departed husband. May God rest his soul. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm fine over here. Polly... I can hardly hear you from all the way over there. You're exaggerating. This is fine. It won't do to be all clumped together with such a large table and cafeteria. We have to make use of all this space. <sighs> now tell me, that wound on your face, what happened? Let's just say I had some trouble during the last case I was working on. I'm sure it'll heal. It's just a flesh wound. Oh my, well, there's no need to be the tough guy here. I want you to be able to relax here. I've prepared a special room for you. A famous rock star once stayed in the same room, you know. Really? I feel honored. If you need anything, anything at all, just let me know. I'll help you out in any way I can. Zach, the lady is offering to help. Do you want to ask her about the town? 
Say, Polly, what can you tell me about this town? Well, let me see. You might know this already, but the town is called Greenvale. It rains here quite often, but it's a nice place, surrounded with nature. It was a big and prospering lumber town until not so long ago. We used to have a population of over 6,000 people. Less than a tenth of them left now. This hotel was built back then. We saw plenty of guests in those days. That's why this place is so big for such a small community. I have so many fond memories from back then. I suppose the clock on the community center is quite famous too. The clock? Oh yes, it's lovely. It rings in the morning and at night to let the whole town know the time. You'll hear it many times during your stay. It's a beautiful sound. And you'll love it too, I think. I look forward to hearing it then. Anything else you'd like to know about? Well, Mr. Morgan, I'd better start cleaning up. You just take it easy. I'll bring your coffee out in a moment. Thank you, Polly. I have to warn you, though. I am very particular about my coffee. The very best you have, please. I understand. I'll be right back with it. You see that, Zach? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In the coffee. I knew I could count on it. Never fails. Now then, let's get going. So obviously that's quite a well-known scene from the game there. F. K. In the coffee. Big ass windows. Very uh, 60s, 70s aesthetic. But we're going to save game here because I am flagging. I'm not very well, I've got a f man flu. Have some fantastic coffee and find out what your fortune is for today. I'm going to save game. And, uh, is there a phone in reception? No. Right, so we'll save game here, but I'll try and play some more, perhaps next Thursday, make it a regular thing if I can. See how much of this we can get through. I do think it's an interesting game. It's very underrated, very underappreciated, but those who play it and know it, you could say it's a cult following, and it certainly deserves that because it is, uh, yeah. So let's uh, save game here. And we shall leave it there. For now. Should leave it there for now and for those that have got to watch subsequently when the stream goes uh, when the stream goes when I put it load up onto Twitch and uh, YouTube I hope you've enjoyed it 
and I'll certainly do some more to keep an eye out for it and yeah thank you very much for watching see you soon